all with really strange names. The king's name is Nebuchadnezzar, and the three men were known as Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The three men worked for the king. One day, the king decided to build a huge image made of gold that stood 90 feet high. To understand how tall this is, image, imagine 15 men all standing one on top of the other to make a tall tower. It sure was big. King Nebuchadnezzar then made an announcement. All people, when you hear the music, you must bow down and worship the statue because I have said so. Whoever does not obey and worship the statue will immediately be thrown into a fiery furnace. The problem with this is God does not want us to worship anything or anyone other than him. After all, he is God. He made us and he loves us so much. He came to the earth and died for us and cares about every little thing in our lives. Why would we want to pray or worship something that isn't real? Something that can't answer our prayers or help us? To worship a big pile of gold like the one that King Nebuchadnezzar set up is silly. The gold can't hear, see, or care about anything or anyone. So the next time the music played, everyone stopped what they were doing and they bowed down to worship this idol. Everyone that is, except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Some of the king's workers that were jealous that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had such good jobs saw that they would not bow down to the image. So they immediately ran to tell the king. When King Nebuchadnezzar heard the news, he was very angry. He immediately ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought to him and explain their actions. The men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not bow down and worship the image of gold that I have made? Just in case there was a mistake, I will give you another chance. When the music starts playing again, you will be ready and bow down to the image. And if you don't this time, you will be thrown into a fiery furnace. Then what God will be able to save you? Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego looked at each other and replied to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we did not make a mistake, nor will we apologize for not bowing down. If we are thrown into a furnace, the God we worship will save us, and he will rescue us. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. That made Nebuchadnezzar even more ang angry. Right away, he ordered the furnace to be heated way hotter than it was usually, was, uh, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers to take Sajak, Meshach, and Abednego to throw them in the fire. The soldiers took the three men just as they were straight to the furnace. As the soldiers were pushing the men into the furnace, the flames of fire killed the soldiers because the fire was so hot and Sajak, Meshach, and Abednego fell into the hot, hot furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar jumped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisor, weren't there only three men thrown into the fire? They replied, 
Oh yes, King, he said. Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, untied and unhurt. And the fourth looks like some kind of angel. Nebuchadnezzar shouted in the doorway, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, follower of the Most High God, come out, come here. So the three men walked out of the furnace without any burns, no hairs on their head burned, all their clothes perfectly fine, and no smell of fire on them at all. At that moment, Nebuchadnezzar knew that they worshipped a real God, not some fake statue. God had sent an angel to protect them from harm. And even more importantly, he realized that they truly believed and trusted in God. So, from that day on, the king made an announcement that all the people, people of all languages, could not say anything bad about Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's God, or they would be badly punished. The king then gave the three men even better jobs than they, are, than they already had for the province of Babylon. Wow, that was a great story. Don't you agree? Here are the four teaching points summarized in the word fire. First, F stands for faith. Always have faith in God because we have to trust that God will save and protect us no matter what. I stands for in tune. Always in tune with God. In tune means having a connection with God. Like making your BFF. R a big word. It just simply means respect and honor him because he deserves it. Last, E stands for encourage. Be an encourager. If God has done great things in your life, share it. By doing that, you can encourage people. Well, that's all I can share for today. I hope you learned something. Bye! And now it's time for... Activity time! Today's activity is a crossword. Let's go through the questions together. Number one, how tall was the statue? Here's a hint, it starts with the letter N. The answer is 90 feet. The statue was 90 feet tall. Next question. Who was the king? It's a long name, but it starts with the letter N and it already has another N in it. Did you get it yet? His name was King Nebuchadnezzar. Oof, what a hard name to spell, am I right? But let's move on from that tongue twister, shall we? Number three, fill in the blank. When the people heard blank, they had to bow and worship the statue. Hint, it starts with the letter M. Hmm, what 
could it be? M mummy? No. Mum? No. M oh, music! When the people heard music, they had to bow and worship the statue. Moving on. Number four. How many boys disobeyed the king? This word already has the T in 90 to start off the word. What could it be? The correct answer is three. Three boys disobeyed the king. Now for the fifth question. Look at us go, guys. We're so quick. But what were the boys thrown into? Ooh. Here's another hint. It ends with E, but it starts with F. Did you get it? The boys were thrown into a fire. Okay, you guys, last question. Number six, who was in the furnace with them? Second letter is E, but the first letter is J. I know a little cheer and it goes J-E-S-U-S. -S. What's that spell? Jesus! The answer is Jesus. So Abraham called this place, the Lord will provide. Well, bye, that's it for now, and see you next time. Hi, I'm Ezekiel James Garcia, and I have my Bible verse today. Genesis 22, verse 14. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide.